Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Interview questions, pumps part 1. I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel which is striving hard to deliver valuable knowledge content for your career progress. So subscribe now before you forget. For every question you are given 20 seconds to think about your answer. Then the answer will appear. Check your answer is correct. Pumps part 1 consists of 5 questions. Question number 1. What is the difference between dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps? Give one example under each type. The time starts now. Your time is up, the answer. Dynamic pump is one in which energy is continuously added to increase the fluid velocities within the machine to values greater than those occurring at the discharge so that subsequent velocity reduction within the pump produces a pressure increase. Positive displacement pump is one in which energy is periodically added by application of force to one or more movable boundaries of any desired number of enclosed fluid containing volumes resulting in direct increase in pressure up to the value required to move the fluid through the valves or ports into the discharge line. Note the keywords in the above definitions. In dynamic pump, pressure increases due to the reduction of velocity within the pump, whereas in positive displacement pump, the pressure increases due to direct application of force on the enclosed volume of fluid. In dynamic pump, energy is continuously added to increase the fluid velocities, whereas in positive displacement pump, energy is periodically added to the enclosed finite or constant volume of fluid. Another notable difference between dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps is the operating speed. Positive displacement pumps or low speed machines with reciprocating pumps being the lowest and the screw pumps being the highest in this category. Dynamic pumps operate at much higher speed than positive displacement pumps because the rotating speed is the main contributor to the head developed. Among the dynamic pumps Axial flow pumps run at higher speed compared to centrifugal pump. Example of dynamic pump is centrifugal pump. Example of positive displacement pump is reciprocating pump. Shown here are the pictures of dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps. The only dynamic pump used in refineries, petrochemical plants and several other process industries is a radial or centrifugal pump. There are several positive displacement pumps to choose from depending on the nature of applications 
and operating conditions. Question number 2. What is shutoff head? Which pump is associated with the term shutoff head? You explain with a sketch. Your time starts now. Your time is up. The answer. Shutoff head is associated with centrifugal pump. It is the head developed by the pump with the discharge valve closed. Shutoff head is a maximum head developed by the centrifugal pump. Head is a maximum when the delivery flow from pump is zero. The head developed by the pump in terms of impeller peripheral velocity and the flow is expressed as H equal to U2 squared by G minus U2 cot beta 2 into Q divided by 2 pi R2 B2. Where H is a head rise, Q the volumetric flow rate, U the peripheral rotational velocity of the blade outlet, which is a tip velocity, or is the impeller radius beta 2 impeller outlet blade angle, and B is the impeller width. This expression can predict what is head rise as we change the flow rate for a particular pump geometry and for a particular impeller angular velocity. When the flow is zero, meaning pump discharge valve is closed, the head becomes H equal to U2 squared by G. This is the maximum value of head the pump can develop. As the delivery flow is increased, the flow term comes into the expression for the head rise and the head decreases. Illustrated in this figure is the head versus flow characteristics of the centrifugal pump. Note that the head is maximum when the flow is zero. As the flow is increased, the head drops. This is a graphical representation of the mathematical expression for the head rise we discussed earlier. This characteristic of centrifugal pump is called drooping characteristics. Question number 3. What is the difference between head and pressure? Why is the term head is preferred in the analysis of pump performance? The time starts now. Your time is up. The answer. The pressure at any point in a liquid can be thought of as being caused by a vertical column of liquid due to its weight.
the height of this column is called the static height and it's expressed in terms of meter of liquid. The same head term is used to measure the kinetic energy created by the pump. In other words, head is a measurement of the height of a liquid column that the pump could create from the kinetic energy imported to the liquid. The head is not equivalent to pressure. The main reason for using head instead of pressure to measure the centrifugal pump's energy is that the pressure from a pump will change if the specific gravity of the liquid changes, but the head will not change. Since any given centrifugal pump can move a lot of different fluids with the different specific gravities, it is simpler to discuss the pump's head and forget about the pressure. A given pump with a given impeller diameter and speed will raise a liquid to a certain height regardless of the weight of the liquid. The pump performance curves for this reason are mostly described in terms of head. Question number 4. In a refinery, a centrifugal pump installed for a specific application is experiencing cavitation problem. What is your recommendation to improve the working of the pump? Your time starts now. Your time is up, the answer. Cavitation of a centrifugal pump is a result of insufficient net positive section head, NPSH. Section pressure falling below the vapor pressure causes cavitation. This figure illustrates how the pressure varies from the suction line to the eye of the impeller. As the liquid passes from the suction to the eye of the impeller, the velocity increases and the pressure decreases. There are also pressure losses due to shock and turbulence as the liquid strikes the impeller. Centrifugal force of the impeller veins further increases the velocity and decreases the pressure of the liquid. All these pressure losses contribute to drop in system pressure at the impeller eye. And the bubble formation is a possibility if the net section head is not sufficient. Hence, NPSH available must be greater than or equal to NPSH required plus certain amount of margin. The golden rule is to ensure there is always sufficient margin available to prevent cavitation. The usual design practice is to ensure the NPSH available is 0.6 meters to 1.5 meters above the NPSH required. If an installed pump in the plant gets into cavitation and fails to perform, what is the remedy? There is no easy solution available for a running pump. Some of the options to reduce the cavitation of a running pump include 1. To reduce the head loss experienced by the liquid in the inlet piping. 2. To reduce the pumping temperature. 
for the present operating conditions which is the flow rate and section temperature evaluate the NPSH required and compare with the NPSH available. Since the pump and connector system layout is already fixed there is little you can do to reduce the heat loss in the piping. Reducing the flow rate will decrease the heat loss by the square of the flow rate. So the first attempt should be to reduce the flow by an amount as required to get the NPSH available by at least 0.6 meter above the NPSH required. The next option is to see if it is possible to reduce the liquid pumping temperature. Reduction of the liquid temperature by a few degrees will reduce the NPSH required since NPHS is a function of vapor pressure at pumping temperature. You can also evaluate other options such as increasing pressure in the section vessel. In some cases it may be possible but in many cases it may not be possible as the suction vessel is integrated with the other equipment making it impossible to increase the pressure independently. Another point often ignored during the selection of the right pump for your service is the minimum flow requirement for the pump. Failure to operate the pump above the minimum continuous stable flow causes recirculation within the pump both at pump section and discharge. Hence, check the pump is operating above the minimum flow recommended by the pump supplier. If not, excessive recirculation will cause the temperature of the pumped liquid within the pump to rise and causes vapor formation and cavitation. If minimum flow line is not provided in the design, provide the same now to solve the cavitation resulting from insufficient flow and recirculation. Question number 5. For toxic and hazardous liquid in refineries and petrochemical plants, which pumps are preferred? Explain the reasons for your answer. What is the special arrangements in these pumps? Your time starts now. Your time is up. The answer. Pumps used in refineries, petrochemical units and process plants handle hazardous liquids. For this service, centrifugal pumps, diaphragm pumps and screw pumps are usually preferred depending on the nature of liquid and operating conditions. Leakage of such liquids from the rotating pump shaft is a source of frequency emissions, fire hazard and health hazard. To prevent pumped liquids leaking through the rotating pump shaft, gland packing is used in non-hazardous service like industrial water. This gland packing needs a small dropwise leak through the gland to remove the friction heat and cool the packing. For hazardous liquids, this situation with gland packing is dangerous as a leak to atmosphere poses fire and health hazard.
Hence, for hazardous liquids, pumps with double mechanical seals are used in several applications. The mechanical design of the seal is such that it prevents process liquid from leaking to atmosphere. The mechanical seals have static and dynamic parts that work together to stop the pumped fluid from leaking. However, there is likelihood that the mechanical seals can also fail in certain situations owing to the failure of components in the mechanical seal. Illustrated here is a mechanical seal fitted on the shaft of a pump. Observe the internal ports that work together to keep the pumped liquid contained within the pump. If any of the critical ports fails, the liquid will start leaking to atmosphere, causing hazard. Hence, several critical applications need absolutely leak-proof pumps. This requirement is met by a class of pumps called sealless pumps. These pumps belong to centrifugal pump category and by design are zero leakage pumps. Two most widely used pumps in this category are cant motor pump and magnetic drive pumps. Another pump which is very widely used in the hazardous applications requiring low flow rate and high head is diaphragm pumps. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.